Welcome back to another history video. Today we'll be discussing the concept of humanism and the art of the Renaissance. The term humanism generally applied to the overreaching social and intellectual philosophies of the Renaissance era in which the beauty of the individual was elevated to preeminence. To put it in simpler terms, humanism is the belief that man has beauty, worth, and dignity. Therefore, life here on earth should be cherished rather than simply endured. Before we delve headlong into humanism and the effects it had on the individual in art, we must first discuss the reason behind its development. During the Middle Ages, between about the 3rd and 13th centuries, life and culture were primarily focused on the church and religion. However, toward the beginning of the 14th century, the power of the church began to greatly decline. This decline is the main reason for the development of humanism. As people became less interested in thinking about God, the afterlife, and the saints, and more interested in thinking about themselves, their natural world, and the here and now. Many historians believe there were two main causes of this decline. The first being the bubonic plague, which ravaged Europe and killed over half of many countries' populations. As the plague devastated and destroyed the church, the church was helpless to stop it. People prayed and people filled cathedrals, yet loved ones continued to die. This led many to disenchantment, causing them to seek out other explanations beyond the spiritual for human suffering and loss. The second and perhaps most profound reason for the decline of the church was the rise of the market economy. As money began to be amassed through trade, the power of the church declined even more. From this rose city-states and monarchies, governed more by economy than religious restriction. All in all, the church became too stuffy, too impractical, and too rigid. Thus, it was replaced with the secular human's capacity to learn, create, and especially enjoy. In short, it was replaced with the idea of humanism, where the study of human progress and human nature is at the center of all things. This was especially seen in the art of the Renaissance. During the Middle Ages, art and literature focused almost exclusively on the church and salvation. Biblical figures were portrayed as ethereal and often had halos. As humanism began, became the focus of the Renaissance, art and literature also shifted focus to the individual and worldly matters along with Christianity. As we look at some of the most famous works from the Renaissance, we will be focusing on how they portray the theme of humanism. One of the most famous artists from the Renaissance was Michelangelo, who was born in Capriz, Italy on March 6, 1475. Coming from a wealthy family, Michelangelo was sent to school, but was only interested in sketching and painting. His father and uncles tried to dis switch his focus away from art, as they thought that art was an occupation only for peasants, but he could not be dissuaded. At the age of 13, his father agreed to let him study with a popular artist in Florence. And at 16, he went on to study with Bertoldo di Giovanni, where he became obsessed with trying to create the perfect human forms in marble, and even secretly cut up dead bodies to see how they were put together. In trying to capture the perfect human form, Michelangelo also captured the essence of humanism, as he portrayed biblical figures in their humanity, as seen in his first famous piece of art, the Pietra, which depicts Mary and Jesus. At the age of 26, Michelangelo created his masterpiece, David the Warrior, which not only tried to capture the beauty of the human form, but the very human essence of David, without any halos or supernatural trimmings. Then, about a year later, Pope Julius II summoned Michelangelo to Rome, to work on perhaps his most famous work, the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, which is located in St. Peter's Basilica. Michelangelo painted the Sistine Chapel using a scaffold and lying on his back. It took him four years to finish the 10,000 square foot ceiling. 
He lay there for hours at a time with paint dripping in his eyes. Several years later, he also added the fresco on the back wall, depicting the Last Judgment. Possibly one of the most famous scenes from the Sistine Chapel is the creation of Adam. The concept of humanism is once again found in this scene. Notice how Michelangelo placed Adam in a natural landscape, with natural man as the emphasis of his painting. In fact, God himself is depicted as human, in human form. He's no larger than Adam, and he's surrounded by very human-looking angels. Leonardo da Vinci was another very important Renaissance artist, as well as a scientist, inventor, mathematician, and geologist. Many believe he's also a genius. Da Vinci began as an apprentice to a famous artist, where he was able to practice and perfect his artistic abilities. He would then go on to work for very important figures, such as the Duke of Milan, Pope Leo X, and King Francis I of France. One of his most famous works is the Mona Lisa. When da Vinci created this famous, famous lady, he opted to focus solely on humanity, without any religious themes. This is a trend that would continue with other famous Renaissance artists. One of the most important artistic tools to come out of the Renaissance is the use of perspective. The art of drawing solid objects on a two-dimensional surface so as to give the right impression of their height, width, and depth. Da Vinci took the idea of perspective a step farther by adding perspective of clarity in which distant objects are less distinct and perspective of color in which distant objects are more muted in their colors. This is seen in his painting The Last Supper. Notice how the back wall is represented to show distance while the outside scenery is muted and blurred. And the composition of this painting automatically draws your eye to Jesus, the subject. Another effect of humanism on Renaissance art was the imitation or the rebirth of the ancient Greek and Roman cultures. Raphael's fresco, The School of Athens, focuses on Greek history and modern Renaissance artists with no head nod to the church. Within his painting, he included famous Greek fa figures such as Plato and Aristotle. The effects of humanism in the Renaissance were not only confined to Italy. The Renaissance eventually spread to Northern Europe as well, where the focus on humanity shifted to portraits such as Jan van Eyck's portrait of Giovanni Arnolfini and his wife. The Renaissance was not only a rebirth of art, it was also a rebirth of literature. The philosopher Francesco Petrarch is often called the father of humanism. He wrote love poems focused on the beauty of humanity in the vernacular, or modern tongue, unlike most previous literature, which was most often written in Latin, the language of education at the time. As the Renaissance spread into the growing wealth of the northern European nations, humanist ideals were merged with Christian ideals through literature like the Gutenberg Bible, the Praise of Folly, and Utopia. The spread of literature can in large part be attributed to the invention of the printing press by Johann Gutenberg using movable type for the first time in 1455. The first piece of literature printed using the printing press was the Gutenberg Bible, making the Bible widely available for the first time to people outside of the church. Erasmus is probably the most famous philosopher of the Northern Renaissance. He wrote the book The Praise of Folly, which used humor to show immoral and ignorant people, including the clergy and how they often act. He felt that people should be kind and open. These ideals were in direct opposition to the ideals of the church, but reflected the ideals of humanism perfectly. 
Another famous Northern Renaissance humanist, humanist was Sir Thomas More, who wrote the book Utopia, which put forth the ideas of the perfect society. He believed that men and women could live in perfect harmony together, an ideal we're still striving for. All in all, the Renaissance completely transformed life in Europe through the ideas of humanism and the shift from the religious themes that pervaded life in the Middle Ages to the secularism of the Renaissance. This is the end of our video. Make sure your notes are completely filled out and bring them to class tomorrow.